Move over, boys. Let's get a look at that spillway. It's a beautiful spring morning here in Northern California on, what is today, Wednesday the 29th of March. DWR, fortunately, has just come out with some great new drone footage showing the edge of the spillway as they shut the water off the day before yesterday. So we get to look and see what kind of uh, damage the spillway sustained or how well the temporary repairs held up. And there's also a fair shot of what the debris field looks like in the Thermalito diversion pool at the tail race of the spillway. So let's take a quick look at that. Now, why are these guys so concerned? Well, as you've been if you've been following the series closely here, you understand that the main spillway, the busted main spillway, is the only way we're going to get through the, the spring runoff season safely at Oroville Reservoir. The Hyatt Power Plant alone is, cannot spill enough water to keep up with the inflows with this spring's runoff. The Hyatt can provide about 12,000 CFS of uh, outflow and estimated spring runoffs are going to average something on the order of about 27,000 CFS. If the main spillway gets damaged to the point to where they can no longer use it, they would be forced to use the emergency spillway, an option that nobody wants, including the Department of Water Resources. My name's Juan Brown. You're on the Blanco Lirio YouTube channel. Let's take a look at this drone footage and a look, quick look at the weather and the real-time numbers. Wednesday, 29 March. First, let's go back and recalibrate our eyeballs as to what the spillway looked like after emergency repairs were implemented and before they started pouring water over it. Of particular interest is to see how well the Shot Creek repair held up at the face of the spillway. Of particular interest may be the left side, the viewer's left side of the spillway where it looks like that has been eroded back the furthest. Here we can see the drain pipe sticking out of the bottom of the shot creek repair. And finally, a nice wide shot showing the emergency repairs completed and getting ready to run the busted spillway again. Here's that footage from back on 17 March when they first reopened the spillway waters. PBS footage, there's the water going over the rock bolts and over the edge. Where they quickly ramped up the water from zero to about 40,000 CFS within less than an hour to avoid additional head cutting or erosion right here at the end of the spillway. Now here we are 10 days later on the 27th of March getting ready to shut off the flow over the spillway. Note after 10 days how clean and clear the water is running through the newly formed canyon. This is a, a, approximately 40,000 CFS. The water's flowing nicely off the edge into the plunge pool with what looks like pretty minimal erosion. Looking straight down into the plunge pool. Great shot. Now here's where operators ramp down the flow from 40,000 down to 35,000 CFS for a couple hours, then down to 30,000 CFS for a couple more hours, and then quickly down to zero flow. Again, it's the low flows that are their cause for concern for erosion. So every time you cycle the spillway on and off, you cause a little bit more damage, a little more erosion, and a little more debris in the tail race. But operators have no choice as they cycle between 835 feet, the lowest the spillway can flow, and 865 feet, the highest flood control number they're willing to work with. Now here's the issue with low flow. As they begin to shut the water off, you can see on the left side there, erosion starts taking place aggressively. Anywhere you see the brown water, that's erosion. Coming up, you can see the head of the rock bolts right there. The sheeting effect, I think, is similar to pouring a whole 
full bottle of soda upside down and getting that glug, glug, glug effect. As you can see, a little water goes a long way causing as far as erosion is concerned. And this is why the throttle at this spillway is effectively stuck at 40,000 CFS. Let me slow this video down to half speed and see if we can get a reading on this shot crete. It appears that the shot crete on the vertical face of the spillway, particularly on the left side, is held up, but some of the shot crete below that may very well be gone. We'll, we'll get some better pictures of this soon, I hope. Now, there's quite a bit of debris there, new debris from this most recent spill, but as we as the drone backs out even further, we can see that the channel is flowing well from the Hyatt power plant, though it is got quite a bit of debris in there and that water level is raised somewhat. Again, this is half speed. So they'll be able to quickly get in there and clean this debris out. Geologists will take samples of the debris and compare those samples to the geology in the canyon and see where the debris came from and what's wearing out the most. So the spring-like conditions continue in the Sierras for the next uh, seven days, maybe a little precipitation tomorrow on Thursday, but temperatures remain below freezing at night, allowing a gradual release of our heavy snowpack, almost 200% snowpack upstream. Currently, the Oroville Reservoir is at 838 feet, already up two feet since they shut the spillway off just two days ago. So they got a good 10 day plus window of opportunity to get in there and effect more emergency repairs to the spillway, uh, clean out the debris from the tail race and the Thermalito diversion pool, and get ready for at least one more spill to get us through this spring, perhaps maybe two. Meanwhile, let's stay tuned and see what kind of a design they come up with temporary design to get us through next year, next flood season.